Hey everyone, welcome back to Biblical Theology Today. I'm Jackson Gravid, and today we're going to keep on talking about God's people and, and water, but we're going to go a little bit of a different route than we've got in the first two videos. Today we're really going to focus and spend some time looking at Jesus' baptism. And specifically, what we want to look at with Jesus' baptism is uh, his age when he was baptized. We think that that's really significant. It's a detail that Luke gives us uh, very clearly. And uh, we want to talk today about, about why Luke might be including that detail and the significance uh, of Jesus' age. In Luke 3.23, we learn that Jesus, when he began his ministry, was about 30 years of age. And his ministry begins with him publicly coming to the Jordan River and being baptized by John the Baptist. That's the first step that Jesus takes in his, in his public ministry, and that's recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, a very, very important event. And that number 30 is hugely significant whenever we start looking at other stories in the Bible, specifically in the Old Testament. Remember, all of the New Testament writers are immersed in the Old Testament scriptures. Anytime that they give us a detail or, or a phrase, the chances are uh, that that they're doing that because it has some sort of Old Testament relevance or meaning. They're, they're steeped in these scriptures. It's what they've been raised in. It's what they've read. It's what they've known. And so every time that we come to the New Testament, and specifically to these gospel stories, we should be coming uh, with minds that are, are always looking back to the Old Testament and thinking what stories might be informing what's happening here. One thing uh, the, the our minds should be drawn to whenever we read that Jesus is 30 years old at his baptism is Numbers 4, 2, and 3. In Numbers chapter 4, Moses is giving the people of Israel some instructions regarding the priesthood. And he says in verses 2 and 3, Take a census of the sons of Kohath from among the sons of Levi, by their clans and their fathers' houses, from 30 years old up to 50 years old, all who can come on duty to do the work in the tent of meeting. What we learn in these verses and in a few other places throughout the Old Testament, specifically in the Torah, is that priests are supposed to be within the age range of 30 and 50. They don't have to start being a priest at the age of 30, but that's the first time when they're eligible to be a priest. And so whenever Jesus is being baptized in the Jordan at 30, uh, maybe there's some sort of priestly overtones that are happening in that story that we need to be aware of. And if we keep reading our Old Testaments, we find out that that is very true. Uh, in, oops, too far. In Exodus 29, 1 through 5, we read, Now this is what you shall do to them to consecrate them, that they may serve me as priest. You shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then you shall take the garments and put on Aaron the coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastpiece and gird him with the skillfully woven band of the ephod. So what are you doing whenever you consecrate priest? Well, you're bringing them to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and then they're going through this ceremonial washing, this cleansing. And so Jesus, at 30 years old, the first time when a man would be eligible to enter into the priesthood, goes to the Jordan River. The man who is baptizing him is John the Baptist, who we learn is a Levite. And this Levite, John the Baptist, is cleansing Jesus with water. And, and so this, I think, is supposed to be showing us that, that Jesus, at his baptism, it's like he's being consecrated or anointed as a priest. And that's a theme that's going to be picked up on in a lot of other places in the New Testament. Luke will talk about it quite a bit. The author of Hebrews will make a huge deal about how Jesus is our high priest and is significant and important for us because the high priest has really important jobs. First, the high priest is supposed to confess the sins of the people. The high priest is not only supposed to pray and repent of his sins and confess his sins, but the high priest is the representative of the people of Israel who goes before God and will pray and confess the sins of the entire nation. 
And so one of the things that Jesus does for us is he confesses our sin. Jesus is uh, in the in the throne room of God, and he knows that we don't pray the way that we should, so he makes intercession for us, but, but he's also a high priest who can confess our sins. He took our sins and bore them on the cross. He was punished for them. Uh, he was the guilty one in our stead who went under the wrath of God's judgment, and, and he confessed all of our sins perfectly, even though we don't confess our sins perfectly. The other really important thing that a high priest does is high priests offer sacrifices. But the high priests in, in, in the Old Testament, they just offered sacrifices of bulls and goats. And Hebrews 10.4 tells us that the blood of bulls and the blood of goats cannot save us. But Jesus is a better high priest. He's a high priest who doesn't just offer an animal sacrifice, but he offers up himself to the Father he offers up himself as the perfect and spotless sacrifice to cleanse us from all of our sin and to redeem us. And so at Jesus' baptism, we're supposed to understand that he's being consecrated and anointed as our priest, that he's about to embark on his, his public ministry throughout the Gospels, and, and then the later New Testament writings are telling us why that ministry was important. And, and one of the things we learn from this story is that Jesus is our priest. Another thing that we learn from this story as we keep on reading the Old Testament is we, we come to a passage like this in 2 Samuel 5.4. We learn that David was 30 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 40 years. How old was David whenever he became king? Well, he was 30. How old was Jesus whenever he was anointed at the Jordan River? He was, he was 30. And we know throughout the Gospels, we know from the Old Testament prophecies, we know from Paul and the other New Testament writers that Jesus is the Davidic king. That God made promises to David that he would have a son who would sit on the throne forever and rule forever and ever as king of the cosmos, and that is Jesus. He's the son of David. He is the Davidic king. And, and just as David began doing his kingly ministry at the age of 30, Jesus would begin his kingly ministry at the age of 30, as he would go around preaching throughout the Gospels, proclaiming that the people needed to repent because the kingdom of God was at hand. And so David is uh, the one who becomes king at 30. Jesus starts his kingly ministry at 30. And uh, just like with the priest, David was also anointed. We learn in 1 Samuel 16 that uh, the prophet Samuel came to David and, and anointed him. We don't know what he anointed him with or how exactly he anointed him, but we do know that he was anointed. And so in the same way, John the Baptist here is anointing Jesus not only as our priest, but also as our king. And then thirdly, we learn something very interesting in the book of Ezekiel. You may know that throughout the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel is referred to as son of man. And whenever we get to the Gospels, particularly Mark's Gospel, uh, one of the favorite phrases or fa favorite titles that Jesus has is son of man. And so automatically this kind of makes this link, this connection between Ezekiel in the Old Testament and Jesus in the Gospels. Ezekiel was a son of man, and now Jesus is being called son of man. And we learn in Ezekiel 1.1 a very, very fascinating detail. We read, In the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I was among the exiles by the Chabar Canal, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Now, there's a lot that we need to unpack in this verse. First of all, if you're like me, you read Ezekiel 1.1, and you hear him say, in the 30th year, and your mind immediately goes to, well, Ezekiel was a prophet during the Babylonian exile. He must mean the 30th year of the exile. The issue is that doesn't line up chronologically. Whenever Ezekiel is beginning this book, and, and he's talking about the 30th year, this would have been taking place in the 5th year of the exile. And so what does Ezekiel mean by 30th year here. And we decided that we needed a little bit of help on this one, and so we looked at one of the leading uh, biblical scholars in the world today, D.A. Carson. And D.A. Carson uh, has this really helpful comment. 
in uh, the NIV study Bible that he helped edit, where he gives his interpretation of what Ezekiel meant at that point. You can see right here uh, the bold face. He's, he's translating this and interpreting this phrase as my 30th year. And he goes on to explain that this is possibly a reference to Ezekiel's age. And then he goes on and says, instead of entering the priestly ministry, God gives him a prophetic ministry. And, and Carson is picking up on the fact that Ezekiel, throughout his book, mentions that he was a Levite, that he should have been a priest. But he's removed from the temple of God. He's in Babylon, in the exile, and so he can't do his priestly ministry. And so instead, whenever he turns 30 and he would be eligible to enter into the priesthood, God instead anoints him as a prophet. Ezekiel starts to be a prophet at the age of 30. And again, we have a connection to Jesus' baptism. Jesus is baptized whenever he's 30. And Jesus is going to go on in the Gospels and have a prophetic ministry as well. Now, we might hear that and get a little bit confused because prophetic to us usually means you're, you're uh, telling the future. You're looking at future events and explaining what's going to happen in the future. And Jesus does that. He does it in the Olivet Discourse, which is found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But he doesn't do it very often. Most of Jesus' teaching ministry is not foretelling future events. But the term prophetic doesn't only mean that you tell future events. You may uh, have heard before that uh, someone like Martin Luther King Jr. had a prophetic voice to a generation. That he was someone who was willing to stand up and combat sins that he saw in his culture and in his world. He was willing to take a stand and say, this isn't godly, this isn't right, this needs to be repented of, and uh, he's, he's almost like a lawyer. He, he's calling people out on their sin, and he's telling them that they need to change their ways. He's telling them, if you don't do that, the judge will judge you. And if you read the Old Testament prophets, that's really what the Old Testament prophets do more than anything else. Yes, they do tell some future events, but the majority of the prophets, uh, their ministry centered around telling the people of Israel and the people of Judah that they needed to repent and change their ways or else God was going to judge them. And yes, they did foretell future judgment, but, but mainly the prophetic ministry was this role that, that God uh, would appoint men to where they were supposed to be preachers who called the people to holiness and repentance. And as we read through the Gospels, we do see that Jesus has that type of ministry. The very first sermon that Jesus preaches in, in Matthew chapter 4, short, shortly after being baptized and then tempted by Satan, the very first sermon he preaches is repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And he's... He's a prophet, but he's a prophet that's better than all of the Old Testament prophets. Hebrews 1 will make this point very, very clearly in the opening verses. And the reason that Jesus is a prophet who is better than the Old Testament prophets is because all of the Old Testament prophets were pointing forward to this guy. Whenever they told their prophecies about the future and their prophecies about a Messiah who was to come, Whenever Moses and Deuteronomy talked about a prophet who would arise that the people of Israel needed to listen to, they were talking about the prophet whose name was Jesus. The prophet who would come and preach the good news of the kingdom of God. And wouldn't just preach the good news of the kingdom of God, and wouldn't just preach repentance, but would be a king who could establish that kingdom, and a priest who could lay down his own life, so that all of us could be forgiven and enter into that kingdom. And so whenever we read this detail in Luke, that Jesus was baptized at the age of 30, that he started his ministry at the age of 30, I think whenever Luke recorded that, Luke obviously knows the Old Testament very, very well. And I, I, I have to imagine that he was smiling because he knew in that one detail, he was teaching that Jesus is our prophet, our priest, and our king. And he was summarizing for us the entire gospel message. Thank you for joining us again. If you've missed our earlier videos, uh, we would love it if you would go back and, and check them out. And we look forward to producing more content and, and being with you again in the future. Thanks.